work here in Montgomery, but I also am in Silver Spring, and then I have a similar group in Silver Spring, um, which is opposite corner of the city. Um, and then I've been spending a half day in, there's four schools in both, like two schools in each community, so I've been spending about a half day every week. It usually works out a little bit more than that. Well, quite a bit more than that, but anyways. For the first couple of weeks, we just sort of did games and sort of theater skills, sort of just to get to know, because I didn't know whether they wanted to do a play or not. What they wanted is more arts, um, arts programming in the community. So that's why they put me in these two communities, because it was lots of sports, but not necessarily as much arts. So, yeah. We have our programs in the winter, which are generally indoor programs for your gymnastics or whatever, soccer, basketball, and then we have our outdoor programming in the spring for soccer and uh, baseball. And but in the summertime, it's you're on your own. We weren't too sure how this was going to happen as an artist in the community. It was just kind of well, let's just see what goes on here. We didn't know who whether we were going to get a writer or a musician or a playwright or just what sort of artist we were going to uh, get eventually. It was just like I said about the kids, I was okay in school, I wasn't great, it was never where I, excel uh, where I excelled, um, but when I got, when I did drama and stuff like that, it's just sort of, you know when you find something that you really like, you should do it, and so that's what, what I've done. Yes, uh, she was involved with the schools at Montgomery School and at St. Dominic School and uh, with the kids there, they just loved her. That what we've sort of done is that put up a calendar of the times and dates that will be in the schools and the ones that are interested could sign up and the ones that weren't, they, you know, didn't have to, they weren't forced to be part of that. Um, but what I always find is interesting is some then later on in the year, they, you know, they talk to the other teachers that have done some stuff with me, and all of a sudden my my calendar's full. Um, or at the beginning, there's just one here, there, and then and then I'm coming more and more during the week and doing other stuff. You end up um, running into kids that maybe aren't necessarily academically strong, or they're maybe not socially really great, but all of a sudden you get them up in front of a group, and they they do really well. They Teachers will say, and, and I think sometimes it's because I have no expectations. I'm just like, okay, you, you come up here and we're going to do this. And without those, oh, well, she's the shy one. I don't know that going into the class. And, and sometimes I think that that helps out. I get excited when the teacher's like, I can't believe you got them to do that. And I didn't even know that it was an issue. So I always think that's pretty cool. We wrote some scenes on bullying, acting out scenes on bullying with one class. We made masks just this week. Um, we've uh, all sorts of different stuff. Um, do just getting up in front of people, improv skills, um, vo like speaking, um, vocal warm-ups, physical warm-ups, characterization, all those sorts of games that just... And you, of course you have to gear it to all the different levels. Um, movement. Uh, and movement that isn't necessarily dance. The guys get into that a lot more. You know, lots of times, movement, oh no. But you can do stuff that is, is cool and it gets them to do stuff that isn't necessarily sports, but they're moving and they're doing creative physical stuff. So The kids really loved him uh, and loved her, but uh, they, they really got involved in the drama. I think it opened a lot of people's eyes or a lot of kids' eyes as to uh, something that, hey, this is fun. You know, we can do this, this is fun. Um, this play is a play that they came up with, the girls in the show came up with. They wanted to do something um, something related to America's Next Top Model, but they also wanted to do fractured fairy tales. So this is called um, uh, Far, Far Away's Next Top Princess. Everybody, unmask yourselves. aren't always right. Well, Fuskis and audience, it has been a pleasure once again. I look forward to getting together the next time a princess needs to be crowned. Let's hope that it's just as exciting as next time. Till we meet again. Ta. Equal athletic.
athletic competition for women. Hey, those silver shoes look like a real winner. Want to race me 50 meters? Thank you. No, but I want just to get back to Kansas. Oh, <laughs> Oh, this will be more fun than beating Bobby Now, now. Wait a minute. <laughs> Their game's over. I win. Yes, and you were great. You deserve a gold medal, doesn't she, Wizard? Yeah, I think they I think they had a good time. Um just the, that it was fun. The kids had a good time. There was one woman that really wanted to get um get the program going next year, hope, hoping that it could be continued. Um yeah, just their kids had a good time. You know, and that's that's the biggest part as long as they're having fun. Yep. That's all that really matters. Yep. So. Well, I'm just happy if people are like, "Oh, a play, that's a good thing to do. Drama, that's a good thing to do. Because the more you foster it, the more it, it benefits all the theater community, but I think it's also a really good skill to have. Um, for adults and for kids, it doesn't really matter how old. I do the same things with adults as I do with the kids, which is kind of funny. I don't like to tell the adults that, but um, it's basically the same games and same sort of skills that you work on. I love working with adults because uh, lots of times it's almost like they've forgotten that how to pretend things, you know, how to <laughs> play. So it's fun to, to get a group like that together and just play. Specifically what that group does is they're communicators. Like they're, they're really important for the community associations to communicate with the city. And without that communication it doesn't work. And that's what we do is communication. And the other thing is they always meet each other in meetings. That's the only time they ever see each other. So this is another chance for them to just it's like them to get to know the people that they work with and find other ways of communicating. Okay, well, Montgomery was uh, created in 1946 by the Veterans Land Act by the federal government to provide uh, an area where uh, veterans could uh, build their homes, come back and build their homes. And these areas were set up right across Canada. Uh, Claire spent an awful lot of time uh, researching, interviewing veterans, interviewing residents, uh, interviewing myself as a, someone who grew up out here, and uh, just getting background information, uh, reading, uh, mostly interviewing, and then she wrote the play based on the information that she got from, uh, from the residents out here. Montgomery Place. It's being developed through the Veterans Land Act since there's no place for us to live now that we're all back. And since we're both veterans, it's perfect. Look over here. This is where the kitchen will be. Wouldn't that be nice? And over here, the living room. So you yeah. think that we're going to live here? Is this even Saskatoon? No, not exactly, but close. <laughs> and its development was sort of in spurts. After the war, there was 30 houses built. And then it kind of died off a bit. And then the mid-50s uh, was another spurt. So they built the school. And then there was another spurt and into the 60s. And uh, it's kind of grown that way. But now we've pretty much filled up the area. You know what I mean in the city? <laughs> like, not way out on the edge. So when I go shopping, I don't have to take the bus and then walk a long ways. And you know, a dance wouldn't be such a big deal if we lived in, in Toronto. Toronto. But we don't, because I have a job here, and we have a house and three kids. Soon to be four. 
Kids, are you doing what you were told? Uh-huh. <laughs> Could you come here, please? Yet? Mom, I just graduated from high school yesterday. I know, but time waits for no man, or woman either. Stay here. Yes, I did know, and you're too old to be trying to get your sister into trouble. Which reminds me, Betty, next time you're at the dump, can you ask Jack if he'll come and plow up a bit more of my garden? Thinking of putting in a few more tomato plants this year. No problem, Mom. And I talked to the people from the Legion, and they said you could have all day Friday to decorate. So I called up some of the girls from the CGIT, and they said that they would help us. So with all these people helping, we should be done in no time. Hey, when's Matthew getting here? I think he's thinking of driving down on Thursday. Oh, that drive from Calgary. He's only lived there a few years, but I already dread that drive. I don't know why anyone would want to live in Calgary when Saskatoon is just as good. Same reason you two did for work. Uh, Claire managed to uh, break up the acts. It was a 10-act play, so she had different people in different acts. And uh, the uh, residents of Montgomery came out and supported it extremely well. It was surprising. We were afraid that we wouldn't be able to get enough people, but we had more than enough people. We had to expand the play. You know, Margaret, I'm willing to move to Toronto now, if you'd like. <laughs> I know it's something that we've talked about a long time ago. And, well, since I'm officially retired now from everything, why don't we go? Really? Yeah. It's veterans, children of veterans that are moving back. Uh, there's an awful lot of people that live out here, that grew up out here, and uh, they want to move back here because it's a beautiful area and it's a great place to raise a family. You know, who would have pictured me living here? Yeah, no kidding. You're going to have to ease up on those see your dog running away for two days jokes. Not so sure about that, but you know, Jess, I always saw myself living in a big city like Vancouver or New York. Not Saskatoon, and certainly not a small town neighborhood like Montgomery Place. But you know, I have to admit, this place is great. With you teaching in St. Dominic's and me working at Cameco, couldn't get much better. And you know, I think it'll be a great place for little Andrew to grow up. Yeah, it sure was for me. You know, it's funny in a way, I guess, that we're here. Yeah. It sure is. But, this is it, our new house. Yeah, our new old house. It's like coming home. Yeah. For the most part, I would say 95% of the people that moved out here originally were veterans of the war. And uh, now it's uh, a lot of the children of those people, of veterans that are moving out here. I could walk down the street and say who they are, lived there, and where, uh, who's living there now, and who, who's you know, who they were as a family that grew up or where they grew up and now they're living back out here. A lot of the houses don't even go up for sale out here. They are just handed down through the family from uh, parents to children or grandparents to grandchildren even that are uh, moving out here again because uh, they love it out here. It's a great, great spot to live. Oh, it's so perfect, Grandma. Thanks so much for selling it to us. Yeah. I think it'll be great. Yeah, and you certainly won't have any trouble getting the babysitter with your folks just a couple of blocks away. Yeah, just like you two always babysat us. And I think you'll really enjoy teaching over at St. Dominic's. They seem to have so much fun over there. And you'll probably be the only teacher in the school that actually went there. I suppose you'll have to send little Andy to Montgomery so you won't end up teaching him. Yeah, I think that's the plan. And hey, did you know the teachers of St. Dom's have already invited Jess to play in the Booter Cup? <laughs> <laughs> They're lucky to get you. You're, you're the best hockey player that came out of here in quite a while. They were uh, uh, very open to Claire and uh, wanted to tell her, you know, their experiences and their memories of Montgomery and, uh, and uh, such as the adults, uh, what it was like to grow up out here with nothing. It was a farmer's field. There were no trees out here. There was just uh, fire hydrants in the roads, basically, and uh, there was nothing. And to see it now, how it's uh, grown and uh, landscaped is uh, really strange when you look at a picture and go, wow, there's, there was nothing here. The people in the play enjoyed it, uh, the people watching it. I was talking to one of the mums, and she said that her son asked her if, uh, he could, if she could uh, put him into a drama 
club because he enjoyed it so much. And she was very surprised at that, so she's going to follow up on that too to, to uh, see if uh, she can find some place for children's actors. The people in the play wanted to do the play. Some of the people in the play had lived out here since the early 50s, and this was the play was about their life. It was about, it mirrored their life, coming out here where there was nothing, uh, having no buses, having no lights, having no postage, having, for a time there wasn't even any sewage system out here. People were using outhouses and hauling water in the uh, 46, 47. So uh, it was um, something that they could relate to and uh, put their memories down permanently. There was only, I think there was two people that had acted before in uh, just a, like a community play as well. Uh, but everybody else had never even been on a stage or read a, a script or anything. And uh, it was amazing to see how they evolved into uh, confident actors on the stage. It was uh, amazing. In our case, with this play, it uh, recorded the history of Montgomery in a permanent way so that uh, people in the future can look at it and say, oh yeah, that's right, that's what happened, because in the play there was numerous things that Claire had put in there, details, and people say, oh, that's correct, yeah, oh, I remember that, or I don't remember that. And uh, that's sort of what it is. It, uh, it brings out the, uh, the memories that people have of when they were growing up out here and, uh, and records it for, for permanent. It's permanently recorded now. And, uh, I think that's a great thing to, uh, to, to do because uh, as time goes by, people forget and uh, they don't know or people move in and they don't know the history of the area. And that's what we're trying to do here is maintain the history, maintain the character, the uniqueness of Montgomery Place and uh, well, where what it means to people. Uh, right? Oh, here in front of the house. No, no garage yet there, of course. Weird. It looks funny without the trees, I guess. It looked just like a farmer's field. It was a farmer's field. Hey, is that the petting zoo that was at the end of 33rd? Yes. Do you remember the time when the, gun, the goat bunched you so hard because you wouldn't give up your apple? Yes, I still don't like goats because of that. Where was this picture taken? People say to me, it's like being at the lake. And uh, that's kind of a nice... Uh, way of describing it because it's, uh, it's quiet and it's open and it's green and it's beautiful. Um, the nice thing is there was no expectations, but at the same time, then you don't have necessarily a base to work from. Um, so if it was for another year, we'd know, they'd know what I could do, and then we could get some really good projects going, but it was sort of the, me getting to know them, them getting to know um, what I can do and sort of thing, and what they do. I, you know, every school is different, and every class is different. So. Hopefully, uh, somehow, we'll be able to continue those because the children, the kids really loved them. Um, like tonight, they already mentioned that they'd like to start a drama club next year, even if I'm not here. And I think that's, I think that's super positive. <laughs>